college football. There's nothing like it anywhere in the world. Each Saturday in the fall, tens of thousands of rabid fans all over the country pack stadiums to cheer their favorite team on to victory. Along with fans at the game, tens of millions more at home watch the game for their weekly dose of entertainment. But perhaps the only thing more entertaining than a big game is what happens off the field when the players aren't under the bright lights. In today's video, we're going to be looking at five of the biggest scandals in college football history and how they tarnish the legacies of everyone involved. However, we will not be covering the Jerry Sandusky scandal that plagued Penn State due to its graphic nature and the risk of being demonetized. But if you enjoyed today's video, smash the like and subscribe buttons and stay tuned for more great content. Number 5. Manti Teo and the Fake Girlfriend Hoax When the story first broke in September 2012 that Manti Teo, Heisman finalist and unquestioned leader of Notre Dame's defense, had lost both his grandmother and girlfriend within hours of each other, the entire country rallied around him. Teo and the rest of the Fighting Irish used his grief to fuel their run to the first national title appearance since 1988. But just as Notre Dame's dreams of a championship disappeared, so did Manti Teo's supposed girlfriend. After a couple of deadspin reporters discovered in January 2013 that Teo's girlfriend, Lene Kakua, was actually a man named Renaya Tuayasasopo, the country turned against Teo, with some suspecting he might even be in on the hoax. The imaginary girlfriend memes flooded cyberspace and Teo was soundly ridiculed. Tuyasa Sopo eventually admitted responsibility for the hoax, saying he'd created a female character to betray Lene Kakua and that he'd actually fallen in love with Teo. After the scandal, Teo went on to be drafted 38th overall by the Chargers, becoming the first Notre Dame linebacker to be drafted that high since Demetrius DeBose was taken 34th overall in 1993. Unfortunately, Teo came nowhere close to replicating his college success in the pros. When Teo was on the field for his first two seasons of his career, he averaged 60 tackles per season. But after a pair of foot injuries prevented him from living up to his potential with the Chargers, he bounced around the league a little bit, signing with the Saints and then the Bears. But he rarely was anything more than a practice squad player and he retired from football in January 2021 after the Bears chose not to renew his contract. He now has a wife and a daughter, but one has to wonder what might have happened if he had never been catfished into believing his imaginary girlfriend was real. He wouldn't have had any distractions, could have fulfilled his potential in the pros, and he certainly wouldn't have been the butt of so many online jokes. Even though the scandal has long since passed, whenever someone mentions his name, he will unfortunately always be tied to it. Whether Teo was in on it, or he was just a very unfortunate victim of an elaborate catfishing scheme will always be up for debate. But it's nowhere near the worst scandal on this list. Up next at number 4, Reggie Bush and his time at USC. For anyone who saw Reggie Bush play college football, few will argue he was one of the best running backs in NCAA history during his time as the USC Trojan from 2003 to 2005. In three short seasons, Bush racked up 3,169 yards, averaged over 7 yards per carry, and scored 25 touchdowns while wowing the crowd with his electrifying and elusive running style. Despite losing in the 2006 Rose Bowl to Vince Young and the Texas Longhorns in one of the greatest college football games ever played, Bush was named that year's Heisman Trophy winner, the seventh USC player to earn such an honor. But in the years that followed, he would become surrounded by a scandal that is still talked about to this day, especially considering NIL deals now dominate college football landscapes. In 2006, reports began to surface that Bush's family had accepted gifts from sports agent Lloyd Lake, totaling nearly $300,000. Lake sued Bush and his family to get that money back, and the case was eventually settled in 2010. But on June 10, 2010, the NCAA dropped the hammer on USC. It ruled that Bush had indeed received gifts from Lake and that they violated NCAA regulations. USC was forced to vacate the final two wins from the 2004 football season, as well as all of their wins from 2005. The university then actively distanced itself from Bush, removing anything associated with him, including murals and jerseys. From 2010 to 2020, it was as if Bush didn't exist, and that his incredible senior season had never happened. He was a pariah to the USC community, an outcast. In an interview with The Athletic magazine in 2020, Bush talked about how much the scandal had affected him and hurt him, saying, I felt like I died when I had to hear there weren't going to be scholarships for kids because of me or because of something connected to me. I'm still not over that. It's just something you learn to live with. But after the NCAA ruled that college athletes could not make money on their name, image, and likeness on June 30th, 2021, Bush began advocating for the return of his Heisman as well as the restoration of all his college records and achievements. As of this video, neither Bush's trophy nor his records have been restored to him. But he may have a case now that NIL deals are legal. But no matter if making money is legal for college athletes, 
there's absolutely nothing legal about the next legacy tarnishing scandal on this list. Number three, The Punch by Woody Hayes. Woody Hayes coached Ohio State from 1951 to 1978 and is widely known as one of the greatest college football coaches of all time. He won 13 Big Ten titles, five national championships, and was inducted in the College Football Hall of Fame in 1983. Hayes was known for his passionate, fiery personality, which usually fired up Ohio State and helped them play at their absolute best. But it's also well documented that Woody had a temper. This was sometimes putting him at odds with school officials, referees, and the media. But what happened on December 29, 1978 would tarnish his legacy forever. Following the 1978 season, Ohio State was coming off its third straight loss to the Michigan Wolverines, as well as a streak of subpar seasons by Ohio State standards. The 1978 team finished 7-3-1, was matched up with a 10-1 Clemson team that year in that year's Gator Bowl, led by Danny Ford. The game went back and forth throughout, and Clemson held a slim lead at 17-15, but Ohio State was driving for the game-winning score. Freshman quarterback Arch Schleister had been having a great game throwing the ball up to that point, so much so that Woody Hayes went against his three yards in a cloud of dust philosophy of running the football. He called a pass with around two minutes left in the game. Unfortunately for the Buckeyes, Clemson nose tackle Charlie Bauman intercepted Sleister's pass, snuffing out any hope of a comeback Ohio State victory. That sent Woody over the edge, and what happened next will forever live in college football infamy. It's uncertain whether Bauman said anything to Woody Hayes afterward, but after Bauman got up from grabbing the interception, Hayes promptly punched him in the throat. He even turned on Ohio State players and coaches who had to restrain him. Following the incident, Ohio State Athletic Director Hugh Heinemann and Ohio State President Harold Anderson agreed that Woody Hayes had to go, and so they fired him the next morning. The punch at the Gator Bowl was merely the last straw in terms of several examples of bad behavior by Woody Hayes over the years leading up to the end of his career. These other bad examples of bad behavior included taking a swing at a cameraman during the 1977 Michigan game and hitting a player in a practice leading up to the 1978 season. Woody Hayes did so much good in his life and career, both on and off the football field, and is hopefully remembered for those things. But mention Woody Hayes to any college football fan outside of Ohio, and the punch is bound to come up. Number two, the death penalty. The next scandal on this list didn't just affect one coach or a coaching staff, but rather an entire football program for decades after it happened. From 1978 to 1983, the SMU Mustangs football program engaged in several repeat violations of NCAA rules mostly by paying players anywhere from hundreds to thousands of dollars to sign with the Mustangs. What initially began as coaches handing recruits $20 bills eventually escalated to the point where some players eventually received cars along with bigger sums of money while playing for the team. Quarterback Lance McElhenney discovered this scheme and confronted his coaches about it, only to receive $700 in his locker the next day in an attempt to keep him quiet. A gold Pontiac Trans Am was also given to running back Eric Dickerson. The guess must have worked, however, as SMU qualified for the 1980 Holiday Bowl, their first bowl game in over three decades. They followed that up with three Southwest Conference titles in four years and appearances in both the Holiday Bowl and Sun Bowl in January and December 1983. But following their win in the 1984 Aloha Bowl over Notre Dame, the NCAA would bring the hammer down hard on the Mustang football program. This was the third and most recent time the death penalty has been handed down among Division I member schools. Kentucky men's basketball was hit with it in 1952, and Louisiana Lafayette men's basketball received the death penalty in the early 1970s. But the penalties on SMU football were severe. They included cancellation of the entire 1987 football season, all home games were canceled in 1988, a TV ban was extended in 1989, and existing probations were extended to 1990. In addition, SMU lost 55 scholarships over the following four years. The banning of nine boosters also played to players, reduction of a college staff, five assistant coaches instead of nine, and no off-campus recruiting until August 1988. After the death penalty, SMU suffered through bad football for decades, producing only one winning season in 1997. Today, the Mustangs compete as members of the American Athletic Conference, but the football program has never fully recovered. And every time the NCAA has to consider a death penalty case, SMU is the measuring stick for they, that they use for weighing the punishment. Number one, Bryles and Baylor. Wrapping up today's video is a fairly recent scandal that not only rocked Baylor University, but one that now also has Art Bryles coaching football overseas in Italy. From 2012 to 2016, it was discovered that school officials suppressed more than 50 alleged cases of sexual assault. This scandal not only tarnishes the legacy of Art Bryles, but of Baylor University as a whole. While most of the sexual assaults were committed by former Baylor football players, it caused several people both inside and outside of the athletics department to step down once things came to light. The people who were either fired or resigned along with Bryles included 
Ken Starr, the president of Baylor University, Title IX coordinator Patty Crawford, and Baylor AD Ian McCall. While not every athlete involved in the scandal has been identified, the two athletes of interest in the scandal were Tevin Elliott and Sam Ukuwachu, both former football players. Tevin Elliott, a former linebacker for Baylor, had a record of sexual assault that went back as far as 2009 and assaulted at least five women in all from 2009 to 2012 before he was convicted of two of the assaults, sentenced to 20 years in prison, and fined $20,000. Elliott's teammate, Sam Ukawachu, had issues with domestic violence while he was at Boise State long before he joined the Bears. But after Baylor's homecoming victory over Iowa State on October 19, 2013, Ukuwachu took an 18-year-old lady only identified in police reports as Jane Doe back to his apartment and assaulted her. Surprisingly, Ukuwachu wasn't immediately arrested for his crime, and it took a long time for him to be convicted due to his appeals by his attorney that took several years, but he was eventually convicted of second-degree sexual assault in December 2022 and sentenced to six months in prison. As for Bryles, he's bounced around between coaching high school football and coaching in the Italian Football League with the Guelphi Ferenz although he did lead the team to a championship with a 21-17 upset win over Milano in 2022. But it's safe to say that Bryle's reputation in college football has never recovered after the numerous sexual assaults that happened on his watch. From once being a leading candidate to replace Texas legend Mac Brown as the head coach of the Longhorns, to coaching high school football as well as overseas, Art Bryle and Baylor experienced a stunning fall from grace. College football is a sport of many great coaches and athletes who are respected for their legendary feats off the field as well as their work off of it. But for as much as people love this game, the sport has had its ugly moments from time to time as well. What do you think? Did we get this top five right? Sound off in the comments. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.